بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين القدس السلام رزاق الكريم اختي في الله that which is known by the Muslims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to test us the life of this world is a test الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. Then who created death and life to test you all, which of you all are best in deeds? And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, إن خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا. We created man from a نطفة from a sperm. Mixed. Number Talihi. Testing him. Fajalnahu Sami An Basira. We made him seeing and hearing. Yetamekan Bihima Minata'a wal Ma'siya. We made him seeing and hearing. As Ibn Kathir says, they can use his hearing and his seeing either for obedience or disobedience. Wayakul Rabbuna subhanahu wa ta'ala. كل نفس ذائقة الموت. Every soul is going to taste death. ونبلوكم بالشر والخير فتنة. We test you with evil and good. A testing. وإلينا ترجعون. And to us is your return. Meaning we're going to hold you accountable according to how you did your test. فالمؤمن and believer he's tested in good and he's tested in bad and he's tested in his religion. All of mankind, all of mankind, Muslim or non-Muslim, is tested in good and bad. Hardships and ease. Catastrophes and calamities and comforts and luxuries. All, is, all of it is a test. It's not because Allah loves you or Allah hates you. Allah tests with good and bad. وَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمَنِي لا إنما هو امتحان As for mankind, if Allah tests him فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْعَمَهُ He gives him, he honors him, he gives him wealth, comfort He says, my Lord has honored me No, it's just a test It doesn't indicate that not everybody that Allah has given money and wealth and health, family, that, that indicates that Allah loves them. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانَنِي لا. عندما يا أخي هو امتحان. هذا امتحان. As for if he tests him, فَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ ضَيَّقَ عَلَيْهِ He makes his provisions very small and tight. He says, my Lord, has humiliated me. No, it, it's just a test. The good and the bad is a test. That's all of mankind that tested in good and bad. As for the believer, he, he has an extra test. Hasib an nas an yaqulu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yiftanun. Do the believers think that they will say they believe and they won't be tested? Anybody said that you Muslim? You said you're a believer? You're going to be tested. Nah. -uh. You say that you're a believer? You believe in Allah on the last day? It's not easy. You don't just think that you're going to be left alone saying that you believe and Allah is not going to test you. We tested those that came before them. Allah is going to make it known who's true in their statement about they believe and who's lying about it. So the believers tested in commandments and prohibition. It's an honor to take this test. Like when somebody was taking a test for a high position, a high job, like <laughs> just to take this test, you have to be on a high status. Uh -uh. That's the test of commandments and prohibitions. This is, this is a test of high status. Not anybody can take this test. Salawat, Ramadan, now, um, this is a test for the elite, for the believers. Now, um, but today, for a minute, 
I want to talk about the test of hardship. What do you do when you're tested with hardships? You're a Muslim. You can't act like a disbeliever when you're tested with hardships. And you're going to be tested with hardships. So first, there's something that you have to believe in your heart. And there's the actions you have to do. Every Muslim has to know this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ أَيَ الْقَدْرِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَحْتِ قَلْبَهِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ There's no catastrophe or hardship or musibah, hardship that happens in this world except by the permission of Allah. Allah wrote this down. But man yu'min billah, whoever believes in Allah, hey, they believe in the qadr. The qadr has muratib qadr. Allah, when you say that you believe in the qadr, mean Allah knew this, he wrote it down, he willed it to happen, made it occur. That's what it means when you say qadr Allah. I mean, you're saying that I believe Allah knew this, he knows everything, so he wrote it down. He willed it to happen to me today, and it happened. Nah. Whoever believes this, whoever believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart. So he's able to accept it and be content with it. Nah. He's able to be content with it. So this is the first thing. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, The strong believer is better and more beloved. Then the weak believer, وَفِي كُلِّنْ خَيْلٍ And all of them is good. اِحْرِسْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكْ Be anxious on that which benefits you. وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ Seek Allah's help. وَلَا تَعْجَزْ And don't be incapable. وَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٌ If something afflicts you from the life of this world, لَا تَقُولْ لَوْ فَعَوْتْ كَذَا وَكَذَا كَانْ كَذَا وَكَذَا Don't say, if I had done this, it wouldn't happen. If I went down that street, or if I would have done this, it, don't say that. Say, Qadr Allah ma sha'a fa'al. Say, this is the Qadr of Allah. Meaning, this is what Allah pre decreed. Allah decreed this. This is what you say, and this is what you believe. The Prophet said at the end of the hadith, for inna law yaftah amalu shaytan. Law, when you say, oh, if I had done this, if I done that, if it opens up the work for shaytan. What is the work of shaytan? You're always regretful about this man. Never shouldn't have taken that take. Uh, you're still upset about the divorce. You're still upset that you lost your car. You still can't get over that your parents passed. You still can't get over it. You still can't. Because you put that loophole on it. If I would have, there's no ifs. Don't open that door. So the first thing you have to believe that is the qadr. Second thing, you don't say if this and if that. Don't open up that door. Close that door because it opens up the world for shaitan to keep you depressed, regretful, and shuck. Next time that you have a new car, I'm not going down that street. I'm not going to go over there. That's Qadr, yaakhi. And anyway, wherever you're going to be, it's going to fall on you. So Ibn Abbas says, Woman, you mean billahi yahdi qalba. Whoever believes in Allah, Allah guides his heart. Hey, an ya'alam. أَنَّمَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ وَمَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكَ To know for sure that which befell you, it wasn't going to miss you. And that which passed you by, it wasn't going to come to you. That you know that yaqeen. When you know this, this takes a lot off of you. It takes a lot off of you. You accept it as a loss. Just accept it as a loss, ya akhi. Other people have more righteousness than you. They're more righteous and they boot deeds better than you. And they've been afflicted with that which is a shed, that which is worse. Why thank Allah? Nah. Lastly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Wala nabulu wanna kum bi shayim al khawfi wal ju'i wa naqsa min al amwali wal anfus wa thamarat bashir sabirin. Indeed, we're going to test you with something out of fear, hunger, loss of lives. I'm going to test you with this. And wealth and the fruits of this world give glad tidings to the believers. Now Allah is going to describe them. 
what they do. Those, if a calamity befalls them, they say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Most of us know this statement, but what does it mean? We belong to Allah and to Him is our return. We belong to Allah means He could do to me whatever He wants to do. Everything I have, He owns it and He gave to me. My legs, from Allah. My house, from Allah. My, my kidneys, from Allah. My eye, from Allah. He owns it. Uh, but as a matter of fact, I'm the property of Allah. He owns me. Anything that he wants to do with my hand, my family, my money, he gave it to me. He has every right to do whenever, however he wants to do it. He has every right. I belong to Allah. We belong to Allah. So are you saying this and you're going to say this out loud because it's going to bring you some solace, it's going to bring you some comfort. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We're going to go back to him and he's going to ask me about this day and I know it. Slow your roll. Slow down. You're going to be asked about this right now. Yawmul Qiyamah. This is a test. Grade your score right now. Grade your paper right now. How well are you going to do? It's a test. Wake up. And you're telling yourself. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. I'm the property of Allah. He's going to ask me about this day. That's what you're saying. The property of Allah. That's Allah's. He's going to ask you about this test. Pass the test. Slow your roll. Stay calm. Take it easy. Allah's going to ask. He's going to reward you. He's going to reward you. And that's what you say. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Qadr Allah ma sha'afa. And you say this out loud and you bring yourself comfort. With the dhikr of Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy on us and be gentle with us and to give us the strength to get past our hardships in the life of this world. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashana Allah in Haila and Sakhnik wa Tubalik. Naam ya Zubir. Just quickly, Abdullah wa Shabbat, is it only said during difficulty or you can also say it when it's ease or. Nah, it, everything is qadr. Everything, even that fly that went in front of your face right now. Nah, everything is by qadr. Nothing happens in this world that Allah owns except what he chooses. But the Prophet said to say it during musibah. Nah. Tayyib, inshallah.